This is a very happy and historic occasion for all who love the great American outdoors, and that needless to say includes me. The Wilderness Bill preserves for our posterity, for all time to come, nine million acres of this vast continent in their original and unchanging beauty and wonder. The poet Gary Snyder called wilderness uh, the planetary intelligence. For me, wilderness was an education I, I wanted more of. So I would always look out the window and imagine wilderness. And just to see the early morning light and how it reflected off the snow and the cliffs, that image in particular has resonated and stuck in my mind. These places that are fundamentally intrinsic to our own public health, our well-being. The wilderness is a sense of a place to have quiet and to have solitude and not to be the most important thing in the world and to sort of lose myself in the bigger picture. It's really about respect. It's really about our connection to the land and animals. The first achievement of the Wilderness Act was to legally define wilderness. In succinct and even poetic form, it reads, a wilderness, in contrast with those areas where man and his works dominate the landscape, is hereby recognized as an area where the earth and its community of life are untrammeled by man, where man himself is a visitor who does not remain. In the late 40s, to imagine a wilderness law, let alone imagine passing a wilderness law, seemed completely far-fetched. To wilderness advocates of the time, led by Howard Zahnheiser of the Wilderness Society, and David Brower of the Sierra Club, who had no, uh, the memberships were tiny, they didn't have two nickels to rub together, but they were men of principle. And they said, this is unacceptable. My father really believed that it was the right thing. And, <laughs> and if he could only talk to people long enough, they would come to see that it was the right thing. In the early 1950s, Howard Zahnheiser, the executive director of the Wilderness Society, realized the need for comprehensive wilderness legislation. Without a federal system to legally designate and protect America's pristine wildlands, conservationists were destined to fight a reactionary and piecemeal battle against society's encroachments on the wild. An awful lot of very hard work, a great deal of good luck, and a tremendous effort on the part of people who wanted to preserve some of the wild treasures that this country has. Eight years, 18 hearings, and 66 versions of the bill later, President Lyndon Baines Johnson signed the Wilderness Act of 1964, guaranteeing all Americans for generations to come the opportunity to step into the wild and explore nature in its pristine state. When the Wilderness Act was passed, it passed with near unanimous votes. People from both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats, came together with a united vision to protect public lands for future generations. As President Johnson said after signing the act into law, if future generations are to remember us with gratitude rather than contempt, we must leave them a glimpse of the world as it was in the beginning. No matter where you live in the United States, you are not far from true, pristine wilderness. The steep mesas, meandering arroyos, and multicolored badlands of Ojito Wilderness in New Mexico. The wilderness areas are places for humility. The sharp, jagged peaks of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. The steep-walled gorge and odd rock formations of the Linville Gorge Wilderness in North Carolina. The wilderness is a calming place for me. It's a place to go to recreate, to get a different perspective on life. More than 700 mountain lakes of the Alpine Lakes Wilderness in Washington. It's really become the place where people go to get a li either a little solitude or a little bit of the kind of adventure that uh, people think of when they think of wilderness. The peaks and forests of the San Gabriel Mountains. The high alpine ecosystems of the boulder white clouds in Idaho. There are places where 
recreationists go. They have long been uh, sort of soulful places, but they also are places that are fundamental, fundamental to the well-being of the country and communities. The majestic landscapes of the Rocky Mountain Front in Montana, the Arctic coastal tundra, boreal forests, and Brooks Range Mountains of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge in Alaska. Wilderness protection is very important to us. Wilderness protection is our way of life. Wilderness means uh, how God made it to us, and that's the way we want to keep it. Wilderness is just as important to future generations of Americans as it was to our forefathers. It's always been something very special. Maybe there's no man been to this place before. There's nobody who's ever seen what I'm seeing before. Wilderness areas are more important than ever before, not only as places that are set aside as refuges, but places for us to learn. The need for wilderness is universal. Wilderness brings us closer to ourselves, our loved ones, and our communities. Experiencing the grandeur of the outdoors as a child has a profound impact that carries over from generation to generation. This anniversary provides a time for Americans to look forward and decide what legacy we will leave for our children. To a kid, a clump of trees at the end of the cul-de-sac, may, that may look like nothing to an adult, but to a child, that can be a doorway into a whole universe. It can be their first doorway into a, just a sense of wilderness through their imagination. And I look to young people. I, I think the future will belong to them, and I think the, the planet that we have left here will belong to them, so I, I, I want to encourage them because I think they will be the, they will be the new shepherds. But when you go out into the wilderness, you stop looking at a very focused, sort of frenetic view, and you're just part of the big picture. We need to sustain areas of wilderness to ensure that we have the great creatures of the earth able to have a foothold and to continue. For your phone to say or your email to say I'm unavailable for a little while is, is a good thing. We're talking about the inheritance of our children and our grandchildren. It's our time to stand up and use our voice for the land and animals. Step into the wild and celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Wilderness Act.